so from the last class uh, we stopped with daily hunting and the modern technology used in business communication so today we'll quickly discuss the remaining section of this chapter and uh, move on to the next chapter some parts so telephone directory so telephone directory is going to be a very important thing uh, it was an important thing early days you might have noticed uh, those of you who have a uh, telephone from sri lanka telecom uh, generally uh, they provide a uh, telephone directory you might have seen that uh, Maybe in your childhood, I don't know whether it is still available. So it may look like something like this. If you could remember, every year they publish a new thing. They also have something that is for early days. It was for the whole country. Then later, uh, I think they did it at the provincial levels. For each province, they provided separate directories because the number of connections were high. Right. I don't know whether it's still available, but this was uh, this was a thing that that was there uh, when uh, when people wanted to communicate or search telephone numbers of people, uh, businesses, or any other services. They simply go through these pages and you know find the telephone number and get connected. So that was that was the past. So here, I think based on that, they have given an explanation of what is a telephone directory. I'm not going to go into detail, but what is important is how to use a telephone directory. Now, for example, you have to have a understanding that, as I mentioned, there are things that are part of a province only, or maybe in this case, they have mentioned uh, for Colombo only, they have a special telephone directory. To get all the contacts, important contacts from Colombo. Um, so they mentioned what is what could be found in a, a Greater Colombo Telephone Directory includes the Colombo Metropolitan and the telephones that come under the switching centers of Gampa, Nigambo, Avisaval, and Kalter. So they come in two sections: residential numbers and the business numbers. Right. Um, as you see, all the important uh, departments you can find in Colombo, their telephone numbers will be available. Um, also, if you look at the business telephone directory, uh, standalone, you'll have only the business related numbers. So, uh, if you are a regular customer of, uh, what do you say, Sunday Times. Sunday Observer, this hit ad, there is a magazine that comes. So almost similar to that, so each, you will see there will be separate sections for automobile, for funerals, for marriage, for, you know, furniture, different, different, different colored pages are there. So uh, easily you can go through that and find that relevant section. Now, I think SLT has provided something called later, just like their general telephone directory, they introduced something called rainbow pages, where the meaning rainbow itself, which has different colors in a way to identify the different type of services and businesses people might look into. So with that color, you can quickly go and it will be looking like a, uh, you know, like a dictionary. So from alphabetical order, you can search the names of the different types of businesses under each section. Now, yellow pages, sorry, rainbow pages, uh, they have provided it online as well. As you can see here, if you go to rainbowpages.lk, um, the same thing you can find in a printed directory. You can go into this and find different types of information. For example, if I go into banking, so further subcategories under banking will come here. So then I can search for under leasing. So now it shows all the leasing companies around the country. If I'm interested only in particular area, right? I want to find uh, leasing companies in Kurnagala. I can just give a simple filtered search and it will give me 
all information and the, uh, who are the people I need to con contact under this lease category. Uh, I'm not sure why it didn't show the different other names. So let's see, Kalambu. So the different leasing companies under Kalambu. Like this, if you see, uh, for each category, so the same concept you had in the directory, which shows in different colors, but here easily through the icons you can recognize it. So if you go to bakeries, pastries, all around the country, what are the small bakery shops available? Right. If you want to go to sports, cricket clubs, so all this is possible. So this is basically a business directory. Right. Just like this, there is another company called uh, Yellow Pages. They also earlier uh, did something like this. Uh, they also had a directory, I think, they also partnered with uh, Sri Lanka Telecom earlier, I believe. But I don't know whether they are still with them or they are doing it separately. But it seems like they are also running their own website, uh, similar to what you find in SLT. So Yellow Pages also has that same kind of information. Right? Wherever you want to find uh, certain people who are registered with these Yellow Pages, you can get the information. So it's an easy way to uh, pick up contacts. Why this is important in business communication? Because when you're involving business, when you're running a company or when you're part of a company, you will come across many different needs. Now, for example, you may, your office might decide uh, you need to, uh, you know, change the interior. Now, changing interior might be a big decision so rather than giving it to you know normal people who could do that it's better to get the expert advice so if you want to find interior designers around the country you can simply go to go through these pages and uh, get the relevant information get the relevant contacts and uh, you know get the job done so here they are giving a small activity like if you get a telephone directory, you should have the idea how to refer to the content page. So there will be a table of contents just like in any books or novels you see you have you know the page numbers and all. And how to refer to the directory, how to find international code numbers. So there will be a section on code numbers like uh, you know what is plus nine seven, plus nine four, plus nine six which country it belongs to plus even you sh it will provide you the uh, details about the provincial code numbers like right? now for our region putlam kurnagala i think so putlam i think putlam chilo and all zero three two uh, like that some other place it will have a different uh, code number so that information will be there uh, where to find local code numbers cost of making calls, different dial tones. So certain information will be available on the directories. So this is the yellow pages I mentioned. Uh, this is very important for business communication student. This is a fast and find guide for the business student to get various information about commodities and products, about producers and manufacturers, about importers and exporters, about wholesale, etc. So almost anything related to business uh, you will find the contact information on the yellow pages. So now I think you can use the online version of this. Okay, so another activity here I'll skip. They are asking you to find a, how to find a bookshop travel agency. Now, if it's a directory, yes, you have to go through the different sections. But I think now here it's very easy to go to the home page. Uh, easily you can go to the relevant category. It and then fill out this information. Okay, moving ahead. Uh, telegrams. So telegrams are uh, a very quick mode of communicating a message and also secure in a sense. So there are many more modern telecom telecommunication systems. Telegrams are still used by many, but it's, it's like an old technology, but still it is being used, especially 
you have to go to the post office, I believe, and you have to give your message. For example, if you want a person urgently to attend, so this was a time when before, you know, this short message services were available. Uh, people who wanted to send a message quickly to inform a person to arrive, like for example, in the morning, if you send the message, if you want that person by afternoon or uh, in the evening, you can simply go to the post office, give your message, they will type it and uh, immediately it will be reaching that person. So there is one thing here, uh, the telegram is transferred to a code before it is teleprinted. Then it has to be decoded when it reaches the other end. So there is a coding, encoding process, like you have to give some information to uh, interpret the message. The advantage of the telegram is that it is delivered to the recipient's home. And if it could not be delivered, the message is sent back to you. That means like there'll be a person going from the post office immediately attending to that telegram. But if the person doesn't find if there is nobody to receive that message, so it comes back to you because you are the person who made the cost for it. Uh, so it will be, I think, posted back to you and again through the post office. So you will be informed today. Today, I think they uh, note down the <coughs> telephone number. So if something is not delivered, you will get a message from the post office. So that's how telegrams work. The telegram also has the advantage of being used as a record when you do so. For reference purposes, we can have the telegram uh, to say that, yes, we had already sent the message. OK. So today, telegram, I think, is yeah, it's, it's still used. Uh, there is another thing called um, telex. So telex is also a machine of its own where you can send messages, uh, but also maybe a little bit more than what you can do with a telegram, where you can have more words. But again, there is a limitation of how many words you can transfer. Uh, so one main disadvantage of this is that it has to be retyped for transmission. Right? So if you make a mistake in your spellings or anything, you have to keep you have to discard the whole thing and start over again. So a telex machine looks something like this. It has its own keyboard. It has its own kind of the paper and printer head. Uh, almost like a typewriter, right? If you look at the structure of it, but only difference is it's, it's connected. It's connected to the telephone line or something like that. So that once you press a button, the whole thing uh, goes through the data communication line. So today, these devices are not used, or hardly used, I believe. And this has been replaced with the fax. Because now in this one, you rely on the keyboard letters and things like that. But with fax machines, you know, like you can draw anything. Uh, you can have your own letters in the paper. It's like you take a photocopy and send, uh, put it through the fax machine, dial the target number. So the target machine should have their papers ready. And uh, within few seconds, in the destination, they receive it. So that is the advantage of fax. So the general advantage of fax machine, it is extremely quick and 100% accurate since what is transmitted is your own message, just like sending a photograph. You can also use your handwriting as much. So diagrams, plans, photographs, even photographs can be transmitted as they are. It is not very costly since it is the time that is taken for the paper to go through. So only thing is the after you draw or do anything with the paper, when you're sending the fax, that scanning process through the fax machine, takes a little bit time. Apart from that, message is uh, sent to the destination. As such, it is not necessary to use abbreviations and short numbers. Okay. Um, what they're saying is that since uh, early, earlier we 
we might have been using short forms of the message. For example, for uh, please meet me, a message called please meet me, which we send in a telegram, might have the letters for please, PLS. But here, you don't have to be very economical like that. You can type in full letters. No need to rely on abbreviations or short, short form of the words. Okay. So, some techniques to ensure effective telecommunication. The following steps need to be followed to ensure successful telecommunication. First is write or type the message clearly. If this is not clear, what message is going to be passed is not clear, then the rest of the process is going to be a waste. So you have to first be clear what you are going to communicate. So write and type the message clearly. Arrange the message in the most suitable order, selecting only the essential points because now you are going to do a data transfer, like you are going to transfer information, you are going to use resources. So make sure uh, whatever you are writing, which one is more important and uh, you know prioritize that or arrange the message contents. State the receiver clearly, use the correct telephone or fax or email numbers. Make sure that the sender's references are clearly stated. That means whoever the person you are sending. Otherwise, people will think it has come from an uh, anonymous person. So whoever is receiving will feel odd. Who has, they might ask this question, who has sent this? And they might, depending if you haven't mentioned your name anywhere, uh, there will be a issue like, even if it is a very important message, they could just ignore it. Right. So make the message brief and avoid long words. Do not use unnecessary abbreviations, which could result in confusion. So uh, all these points indicate uh, to make sure an effective telecommunication has taken place because this is going to involve certain devices and time. Okay. Then email internet writing the other day we briefly discussed. So email is a cheap, speedy and accurate means of communication that has come about with the development of computer technology. In addition, businesses are able to have access to vast database of information via the internet. Okay. So almost all companies are now having their own internet uh, or let's say their own websites. Also, it is expected that all employees have familiarity with sending business emails. Okay, some quick questions, I think, again, pointing to you also. Are you familiar with how to obtain an email connection and internet connection? I would like you guys to quickly answer. Do you have an idea? How to obtain an email connection? Any idea for that first part of the question? How can you obtain an email connection? Or how did you do? Did you read a book or did you uh, ask it from a friend? What was your experience? So this is I'm asking about personal email, first of all. How to obtain an email connection? Yes. So all of you have emails, right? How did you how did you first come to the email? How did you first create your email email address? You can type in your answers. What I'm asking is basically what in what way you first obtained your email connection. Whether somebody created for you or you created for yourself. Or did you read something and then create it? Yeah. 
because different people have different uh, experiences. That's why I'm asking. Okay, search through the internet. So my experience was, I had no idea how to use emails soon after my A-levels, I believe. So I went to a net cafe. Those days, net cafes were there, no? very popular, with a friend. And uh, that friend was the person who created an account for me. And from there onwards, everything started blasting. So that was a, that was the way I, I uh, went into that. Uh, yeah, so when you go to an office, generally in an office environment, uh, you know, once you go there, there will be some people responsible for the IT section, or maybe there will be a person called a system administrator. So he is a person who might create an email for you with a temporary password because when you're creating an email address a password also has to be provided so they will give you that's how the official email address will be created uh, then obtaining internet connection okay yes today we know that there are varieties of ways you can connect to the internet so simply starting with your mobile phone things you can start you can go with 3g 4g uh, GSM, HSPDA, right? various things. And then you have broadband connection, uh, Wi-Fi. So certain companies will, will resort, mostly I think these days companies will resort to uh, broadband connections. So like latest arrival is this fiber from SLT, which is very high, high speed internet connectivity. So even though you don't have a deep knowledge on these different internet, internet connectivity methodologies, it's at least essential to know that these things, these terms exist. There are various options. And what are what is the cheapest option for a you know mass level scenario? So at a personal level, maybe uh, 3G, 4G is okay. Uh, but when you go to a you know, where many people are working in an environment, and in one environment like that, 3G, 4G might not work out. You have to go for a broadband connection because the data rates and the expenditures are very less of affordable. So you have to be aware of that. Do you know the hardware and software required to operate these facilities? Now imagine you are going to use email. Generally, we are familiar, like we go to a browser, uh, we type in our, uh, we type, we go to mail.google.com or we go to yahoo.com, we give a sign in process and go to your inbox. But you don't have to do that always. How many of you are familiar with using email softwares? Do you know any email softwares? How many of you are familiar with that? I mean, instead of going to the website and logging into the inbox, you can do the same thing in your machine itself, in your local machine. Not familiar? Okay, I know that one of you are working somewhere. How do you use? email or do you do you use email i don't know at the workplace okay so do you log into a browser and uh, access the email or do you use a software for that Any, do you remember the name of the software?
So you're already familiar. Okay. Okay. No okay. mind. At least you have an understanding that you are using software. So very popular softwares. There are many softwares. Uh, the one that comes with Microsoft Office is called Outlook. It looks something like this. See if you see it on the screen. So here you can see I have two mailboxes, one from info at alamcitycampus.com and one from Mofaz at alamcitycampus.com. So two different, both these inboxes are mostly run by me. Uh, I think this info is shared between two, three people at Alam City Campus. But then I'm also accessing that. So under each, you have the separate inboxes. So the advantage of this Outlook software provides me a facility uh, to configure multiple, to connect to multiple mailboxes, whereas all the emails come to my machine directly. So the advantage is even if I don't have internet and I want to read an old email, I can simply Go uh, like for example, if I disconnect my Wi-Fi, I can still access my old emails whenever I need to read them, right? So, otherwise, if you rely totally on the browser-based one, you have to have internet always, and which may be a cumbersome work because every time you have to sign in and go. But email softwares uh, relieve you from that and give you that flexibility to work offline as well. So I can even send my email, I can receive email, all I can do through this. Um, this is one coming from Microsoft Out, uh, Microsoft Office package, which is called Microsoft Outlook. And I think this is the most popular one used in almost all the offices. Uh, there is another one called Thunderbird. Apart from that, if you are using Windows, 10, you have a thing called mail. You have a uh, software called mail, which comes like this envelope here. You can find it in the start menu. Here you can maybe configure your office emails or maybe even your personal emails uh, as separate boxes. For example, you can see I have two email boxes configured, my personal ones, sentomofazatlive.com and this server software output. So if I want my Gmail also, I can just add it. It's a simple thing. I just have to go and uh, go to the settings uh, and click on manage accounts and maybe add a new account. So when I add a new account, I just simply have to give my, for example, if I want my Gmail, I give my Gmail credentials, my username, password. That's it. So hereafter, I don't have to go to Gmail and check my emails. I can check them locally here. So just like with Outlook, uh, uh, this gives me a flexibility to view emails offline. Right? So these are some things you have to be aware of when you're working in a place. Okay. So email has become a very popular source of business communication, not only internationally, but also locally for external communication. It is widely used today to transmit messages as well as large documents. So these are some advantages that doing in a um, lengthy manner. It is very popular due to the speed in which the message is delivered. In addition, it is a very low cost means of transmitting message. Large documents can be sent as attachments to any part of the world. See, this is another important point. Geographical, you, you pass geographical boundaries. The message can be copied to any number of email computers. If the receiver wants only to read the message, he can do so. Uh, and wish to have a record, he can download the message and get a printout. Of, so if you, if, you, if you want to take a printout, it's very easy through these email systems. Right. So apart from that, uh, you have to have an awareness about these uh, messaging platforms that may be used in the workplace. So most people might use, if they are very serious about messaging, 
there's there are you know there are there are messaging systems specifically targeted for office environments now the skype we are using now is basically for personal purpose right there is a skype especially for business purpose it's called skype for business so it is the look and feel is similar to skype but uh, you can do a lot of other things uh, extra things related, like you can have your tasks you can have your uh, you know new plans that kind of discussion kind of thing whiteboards all of those things are possible in skype for business and you have to pay money and obtain this and like this skype is free but skype for business you have to pay money for that and they give you a um, advanced set of features similarly there is another thing called teams which is coming under this logo uh, normally i'm also using that uh, for my other consulting purposes so this is also similar to skype you can you have a chat area uh, you have a discussion board uh, so so the calendar stuff so go to files discussion board i can have my all my files online so similar to skype for business this is also microsoft teams this is also used for you know business oriented communication purposes like that there are many other platforms you have to be aware of i hope you already uh, in that trend so no need to worry mm, okay so this is some yeah, additional activity they are asking you to go through a paper and find the different sectors to figure out how many advertisements are there and which sector has websites and email and this is mentioned etc okay so that concludes that section so here here are some uh, typical exam type questions which you need to try uh, i'll leave that for you to attempt these questions to answer to at least to attempt these questions uh, and if you have certain questions that you are struggling to answer struggling to understand please let me know with the question itself uh, in the chat maybe after this lecture okay, like you will have to personally try try this out i already shared this document with you know so just go through these sections and see whether you are able to answer these or whether you are able to extract points um, so depending on uh, what you give us feedback maybe we can arrange a separate thing to discuss the answers for these only or maybe i'll come with a prepared set of answers we can discuss um, so here is one one typical uh, an argument type question is no visual aid can replace the blackboard in the school do you agree so this can have answers as agreeing and not agreeing so these are like you know opinion based questions so there is, there is no correct answer to that some people can say yes some people can say no but what is important is justifying if you say yes you have to justify if you say no you have to justify then only you get the marks so here they are saying uh, blackboard in another way blackboard is the most effective thing in the school nothing can replace it so that's the argument they have presented you so personally you have to either defend or challenge uh, this argument so how will you answer those kind of questions compare and contrast the film and video as audio visual teaching aids advantage disadvantage okay so try these thing we are now you guys are available at home i think you should be able to you know just think out some uh, points for these things speech uh, you can skip that these are some other exercises you can try uh, how will you 
uh, how will you send short messages, telegraphic messages. For example, you are going to spend a weekend with your cousin in Kandy. You hope to go in the Intercity Express morning train on Saturday. Inform him to meet you at the station. So how will you send this in a very short manner without losing any important information? Like that, two other examples. So you, you will come up with sentences on how you will send that message in a very short manner. Because if you are going to use telegraph, you have to be very short and concise. Okay, any questions up to that? Okay, no questions. Okay, so let me begin this chapter and uh, go through at least one or two, three pages and uh, we'll stop at that point. So this chapter prepares you, uh, gives you an idea how you should prepare for a job or a new job if you're already working somewhere, if you want to go to a another place how do you prepare for that how do you evaluate yourself is what is uh, provided as guidance in this chapter so job search and application so first section is analyzing yourself so first you have to list your own talents abilities skills and interests which will give you a better understanding of what you have to offer an employer um, did i give you a small exercise in the first or second class called mind map mind map mind map something like this did i give you an exercise on this like writing on a paper, evaluating yourself, thinking about a topic, no? Okay. Mm. Since you don't have opportunity to do that now, I would recommend if you spend some time uh, search on YouTube, mind map, Tony Guzan search for these words uh, you will find few links first one or two three links maybe the first link if you click on that uh, let's see whether so that will give you an idea what mind map is it's a good tool for uh, Tony Buzan. Yeah, uh, this one, this first one. So just type the exact same words I give, gave you. Uh, you just go through this. He has a lot of other documents as well. Uh, or maybe this one, I think the fourth one. Yes, it's the fourth one. 13 years ago, because I have been seeing this for 13 years. Uh, repeatedly for each class I have been showing. It's this video actually. Maybe I think he has another new video as well. Uh, it will give you an idea how to, you know, prepare yourself. How to evaluate yourself, your skills, your talents. Uh, and not only just for that purpose, even for any other planning purposes in your life. Like, for example, if you're going to build a house, you can put that idea, that main idea in the center and start uh, creating your sub ideas or sub preparations for it. So that will be helpful uh, even in this case. So uh, I, I recommend that you go through that after the lecture. Okay. 
So listing your own talents and abilities, skills and interests will give you a better understanding of what you have to offer an employer. This analysis will, this analysis, it should be analysis, will build your self-confidence. Because once you know your capabilities, your abilities, you will have a confidence. The answers you give to the following self-assessment questionnaire will help you draw your job profile. A profile is a picture of you and your value to an employer. When you complete your own assessment questionnaire and analyze it, then it would help you to develop an attitude that is positive, practical, realistic and imaginative. Right. So when you answer the questions, think about things you have done in the following areas. For example, any volunteer work. So what is a volunteer work? Any work that you have done without being paid. Right. Second, experience in paid work. That could be part-time or full-time. You have to list them. What are your educational qualifications so far? And recreation. That means your extra activities. For example, this might not be volunteer or anything else. It might be some of your, some of your extra talents, like maybe playing rugby. Uh, ladies don't play rugby. Maybe netball, tennis, table tennis. Right. Uh, so you have to first list out these things in this main four section. It's not necessarily these four sections, but uh, this should be a good start to evaluate. OK, then once you have done this, then you can go further answering some other questions for yourself. Do you have a talent or a certain natural ability for a certain type of work? natural ability you know, some people have uh, natural talents right uh, some you may already know or there might be certain things people point out to you they say okay you have this thing you are able to do this sometimes you may have not recognized that talent which you already have with you but by someone else pointing it you may discover that so you can list down such, such talents what kinds of jobs have you done for which you received special praise? For example, you might have received certain appreciation, maybe medals or certificates for certain type of work. So you can list up because those might be your starting points to identify your strengths. Uh, what courses have you taken and passed successfully at school or any other institute, uh, competition, whatever it is? Are you the person people come? Are you the person people come to see when they need help on a project? This is another thing. Like for example, whether people depend on you. If you have a situation like that, that means you have talent, you have skills. That's why people come and uh, ask things from you. So that is another way of evaluating. Do people see you as an expert in an area? Now, certain people have that talent, no? like people might rely on a person, they may go to that person for uh, specific information. So are you very specific in something? Uh, so same question in sixth one, are you good at certain subjects? So five and six are more similar. Do you have hobbies that you like? Have you had any jobs, either paid or volunteer? You have to describe that. Because these are the things that are going to catch up the attention of the people who are going to read your CV, especially the interviewers. What kind of machinery, tools, equipment or computer are you able to use? So this is about the uh, IT facilities or any other tools. For example, uh, it can be like, you might be familiar with whiteboard marking or maybe good with uh, Microsoft Office packages, you are comfortable with using Excel formulas, like those kind of things, or maybe QuickBooks, I don't know, depending on your work domain. Uh, tenth one might be an optional one, especially if you are a sales kind of a person, or you need to travel with your consultant, do you have a license to travel? Okay. So, uh, being prepared for all these things will be 
helpful so you will get some information for your CV. So certain activities. Right. Then further you can see uh, for each of the questions answer like don't care or dislike. Now imagine sometimes you may end up in a job where you may have certain discomfort. Some things might not be you know, 100 percent you can't get a perfect job. That is very rarely possible. Uh, there might be certain things that are OK and you have to say you have to ignore certain things and or sacrifice certain things and go into uh, that particular job. But after that, you can still further ask yourself certain questions. Do you like challenging tasks? Do you prefer routine tasks that allow you to work at a relaxed pace? Do you like work that demands a lot of concentration? Do you prefer easier tasks? Now, some people easier tasks are boring, I think. They like to do challenging tasks, so that's why they're asking which kind of character are you? So first question asked, do you, do you like challenging tasks? Here they're asking, do you prefer easy tasks? Uh, do you like making decisions? Can you work under pressure? Do you like to work indoors or outdoors? Right? Do you like working with numbers? So if you are a mathematical person, whether you are a mathematical person, do you work with your hands? So at first, that might seem to be an odd question to ask. So what does it mean, basically? Do you work with your hands? Any idea? This ninth question, what do you mean? Everybody works with the hands, but what is the meaning here? If you go to workplace, definitely you have to, you know, involve with people, you know, carry documents. Those things are there. But what is the rhetorical question here? Do you work with your hands? So can you relate that to the previous question? It's more related to the eighth one. Do you find the connection? Do you find the connection? between 9th and 8th. So what by by asking this question, do you sorry, this question is wrongly asked. Do you like do you like to work with your hands? Or do you work with your hands? Right? Meaning is now you might be, there are some people who like to sketch down things and, you know, get things done. Like they take a paper, note down certain things and work. There are also some people who don't like to use papers, but they keep everything in their head. Now, even if it's a calculation, they don't use a paper. They do it with their mind and, uh, you know, proceed with the work. So that's what they're asking. Some sometimes people might be faster, like who, who can who can avoid papers, who can avoid uh, sketches. They might be very quicker in doing certain things. That's what they're asking. Do you work with your hands? Understood? Uh, then further question. Um, you can ask yourself, do you like working with heavy equipment? Depends. <clears throat> uh, 
do you like tasks where you have to think a lot? So challenging again, challenging related things where you have to involve your brain a lot. Do you like to work with figures, images? Do you like to write reports? Do you like talking on the telephone? Some people like that. I mean, for business purpose, not for this. Uh, do you like taking orders? So are you a kind of a reception kind of a person? Receiving people. So do you like working with the public? Are you a social oriented person? That's what this discussion. Do you like working in a creative environment? Do you have, so that, that meaning is, are you innovative? Do you like new things? Do you like with people who uh, do innovative things? Because in an office, if you go, uh, you know, recruiters, they look for these kind of characteristics and make sure that environment is also suited for them. There are also certain office environments where they, are, where, where they don't care about that. Uh, there will be a mix of people, people who work alone, who, uh, who are creative, who are not creative, who just do the job what they are supposed to do. Everything is there. But at a personal development, these questions are very important to evaluate yourself. Do you like working with children? Right? So why they are telling that is about kindness. Do you like working in a creative environment? Again, same question. Do you like to be a part of a team? Are you familiar with working with, communicating with people? Right. Okay. Uh, so I'll stop at this point. Um, so the takeaway homework for today is this question from the previous chapter. This set of questions you have to attempt and see. No, no, at the first time, maybe it will be very hard, but just go through. Don't go for very deep answers. Just break them into points and then uh, try to connect them. Right? So if there are certain questions which you didn't understand or finding hard to answer, uh, you can share those questions with me. I'll, I'll be more than helpful to uh, help you with the points to answer those questions.